Grady says hi. Oh, hi, Grady. Miracle says Mer. Look at how big he's gotten. Look at this. Look at this. He's cat. huge. He's huge. He's six oh, months what? old and he's gigantic. Look how big that kitty is. You're so tiny. <laughs> I don't care. Look at this. Look how big that kitty is. Oh, so small. I am the tiniest kitty in the world. She is very small compared to this monster. Knocked over my lamp today. Oh, no. I was telling people about this earlier. I use a... Okay, no, no kicking. No kicking. That's not necessary. Since it gets so oh, hot okay, here... Okay, okay. All right. There we go. I was telling people earlier, since it gets so hot in here, I have to use LED bulbs because mm -hmm. I'm in a closed studio. They're not cheap. They're like $30 each. No. And uh, he he runs by. He had his case of the zoomies. He runs by full speed, bang into the lamp, over with the lamp. Boom, went a $30. Yeah, you broke a $30 light bulb. Oh, my. And then... Now, the surprising part about it is I had anticipated the kitten running around knocking shit over. So I had anchored the lamp to the wall with nails. He still managed to knock it over. Wow. And he's not even... He's six months drunk? in like a week. You're going to be a goddamn panther when you're done, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, that cat's going to wreck your home. You're going to be gigantic, aren't you? You don't want to be anywhere. Mir Miracle no longer gets the zoomies. You don't want to be anywhere she's, near the camera. She's too old. You want to be on the camera? You want to be on the camera? Do you want me to let you go? You want me to let you go? This is the please let me yes, go face. Please let me go. This is the, I want to go play. All right, you go play. You go play. Are you going to hop? There you go. Hop down, go play. Go play. Go kill things. Here. Here's your murder mousey. Go play with murder mousey. There he is. There you go. There you go. Go play. Miracle no longer gets the zoomies. What she does get is what we affectionately call poop foot. Because she, she's old and I don't know. All right, I'm going to make you mad again. Miracle has these weird, like, velociraptor feet. See how they curl over? Yeah. She has, like, these weirdly, freakishly long back feet, like a rabbit. Which causes problems when Miracle uses her little litter box, because clumps of litter and poop get all caught in between those big, long back toes. Have you tried and a litter she, mat? And then she jumps into bed with me. Have, have you tried, guys tried a litter mat, or is she not having that? Oh, she has a litter mat. Doesn't do shit. No. Doesn't do shit. Okay, all right, all right, all ever right. Read the, the, ever, ever read the description? Scientifically guaranteed to loosen your cat's toes and make them release clumped up litter. No, it doesn't do shit. No. So every now and then we have to clean her of poop, and she gets very angry about it. And I'm like, well, you're tracking poop all over the house. She's like, Maybe. yeah, but I made that poop. Yeah. That's my poop. First Amendment, damn it. And that, and she just, she just gives no fuck. She's like, "What? You're bothering me? Like your foot is encrusted with poop? I don't care." It's kind of a nice app, app metaphor for America at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> kind of. We we do sometimes refer to her as Little Kitty Donald Trump. What do you want? He's, I don't know if you can hear him. He's like, ah. <laughs> Human, play with me. Yeah, sorry, I gotta make us money. Okay. I, I don't care. That's your problem. That's my problem. All right. Well, let's get to the intro. She's just breathing at me really, really hard because she's angry that I picked her up. She does you the uh, Tio Salamanca thing from Breaking Bad, where like her nostrils flare, and she's like, <laughs> "Yeah." What are you doing? He's wrecking the green screen. You, you can see it live on the screen. to murder the screen screen. He's wrecking the green screen. And what's what? funny is from what the what the people see, he's just murdering space. Stop wrecking the green screen, kitty. No. Ugh. All right, let's do the intro. Each week... Catherine, ready to our audience go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this week, we're, we're beginning with 
with whimsy. Whimsy? Yeah, I know. It's, well, it's that's a, not something we get much of around here. We is it? We we don't. And that's that's kind of why this one kind of surprised me. But it, this is a thing that happened. This is one of those things where I would I would be dying to be a nine one one operator when this call came in because it's just oh, kidding. You drew blood. Oh, bad miracle. Bad miracle. Little velociraptor feet got me. Runaway unicorn leads highway patrol on wild chase. Are unicorns real and no one told me? This is the thing that happened. Um, a white pony dressed as a unicorn ran through the streets of Madera County, California for over three hours on Wednesday night before she was caught by police. A costume pony named Juliet first escaped from a child's birthday party about 2.30, but was soon recaptured. However, she got loose again around 5.30 and proceeded to lead California Highway Patrol on a long chase as she wove in and out of traffic. Officer Justin Perry says, we got a call of a unicorn running on the highway. I've been doing this 14 years. This is my first call for a unicorn. That's a very special day, your first unicorn call. I, what the fuck? I think what we need to know here is, was there a pony dressed as something, dressed as like a centaur, first horse-related creature that comes to mind, at another location named Romeo? No, there, no. There was, there was. How do you know? How, all I hoof cross lovers. All I know is there at, at that you at the nine one one station. Be like, boss, is there a new drug someone didn't tell me about? <laughs> is there is there something worse than meth? Cause no? that's like my tenth call for a fucking unicorn on the highway. Something's going on. You and you got to start questioning yourself when you're driving along. <laughs> and there's a fucking unicorn out there. Like you gotta, you gotta stop behind the wheel and be like, I don't remember drinking today. Did I? Did I do all the drugs and I don't remember? You know, you've reached the point of don't give a fuck where you see a unicorn on the highway as like. Uh, just someone's like getting time home in time for dinner. That's all I care about. Fucking unicorn. Yeah, whatever. Okay, just get the fuck out of traffic. Baby, Dan's not home. No matter how long you stare at the couch, he's not going to appear. I'm sorry. <laughs> he's not home. That's not how that works. She's just staring at the couch like, if I stare hard enough, he'll be there. No, baby. He's not home right now. Do you see her rocking back and forth? Yeah, why is she doing that? This is what she does. Especially when she wants to look extra pathetic. She just sits there and... <laughs> what are you doing over there? I heard you running around, little scrabble claws on the hardwood. <laughs> he still does not understand he has no traction on hardwood. We're going to get to the point where we don't even bother doing stories anymore. No, we're just we're talking just about cats. With the cats for half an hour. Yeah. Well, and now it's time... For Nash and Tara and the cats. Don't say that because they're going to want it and I don't want to want them to want it. They will. They We're going to have to do an extra half hour every night of just like Miracle licking her ass and Greedy ripping down your green screen. Yeah. Where did you go? Where did you, little ninja, where'd you go? How'd you get over there? You were just over there. He does. He's, he's a fucking little ninja. Um. Well, our next one we is less whimsy. Um, did you drink before you were 21? Be honest. Well, aside from the champagne. As no, I was first drunk at age six. Yeah, but I'm talking about, you know, when you were a teenager. Did you drink before 21? Maybe like once. I mean, my dad always gave us a sip of his drinks. So drinking wasn't that interesting to me. I think once at like the fire department, somebody gave me a drink. Or two, but not seriously. Yeah, you know, I a square. I, I didn't. I, when I hit twenty one, I drank like a motherfucker. That's for damn sure. But before then, I didn't. And you know, I, 
this sort this story sort of makes me glad I never did. Drunk naked man found in car on train tracks. Oh. College Station, Texas. An intoxicated College Station man was found naked in a car that was stuck on railroad tracks. According to the probable cause statement, an uh, officer found a vehicle on the train tracks and the driver's still inside without any clothes. Police say the driver, Connor James Bond. 19. Connor James Bond. Someone did that to their child. Yeah, they did. I mean, at least they didn't make that his first name. No, they had to go with Connor. What's wrong with Connor? Sean Connery. Well, okay, but... Connor James Bond. Right, but if you just say your name's Connor Bond, people aren't going to be like, oh, Connery, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Connery's a perfectly common name. But still, they were they were trying way too hard on this shit. Yeah. 19... Once they found him naked and naked, passed out in his car on the train tracks, he attempted to start the car with scissors. Who keeps scissors in their car? How did, how is, did, hold on. Hold on, officer, the key's not working for some reason. I don't understand. It's, it was working yesterday. It's all good. I got this. I got this. Before seeing the officer, I'm fine. What's noise? After trying to start the car with scissors, he saw the officer and ran away from the scene when an ambulance arrived. Police chased Bond and wrestled him to the ground to get him into custody. Bond tried to physically assault the arresting officer before he was put into handcuffs. And as is always my question in these cases... How do you come to be in this situation? <laughs> like, I have never been, and I've been pretty fucking drunk. I've been drunk enough that I vomited so much all my freckles went away. <laughs> I've never been so drunk that I decided I needed to be naked and then needed to drive somewhere. And that scissors would run my cart. Like, how do you come to be naked out in public? On the train tracks. College Station police said they found a half-empty bottle of Everclear in the back of Bond's vehicle. And what's all over his face? Is that blood? I don't know. I don't know what that is on his face. I really just wonder how you get from, like, drunk <sighs> to naked in public. Half a bottle of Everclear. Everclear's some nasty shit. I tell you what, Everclear it will fuck. Mike is upset that my one question was who keeps scissors in their car, but I think that's a fair question. I keep pliers in my car. Who keeps scissors in their car? I don't. What do you? Why do you need scissors in your car? I, I keep. Are you doing scrapbooking in your car? And okay, scissors. Oh. No. Hi. That Paul already did a really fast licking, huh? Okay. Is she grunting? <laughs> Knock that shit off. Cut it out, man. Where, where's Dan? God damn it. Nah, I just... it Everclear is not... Yeah, Everclear used to be always something I hear about when we were at camp conventions. People said, yeah, I got a watermelon, I filled it full of Everclear, and I put it in my freezer for a month. Everclear is basically just grain alcohol, right? Yes, it is. It's essentially just, it's it's when, you know, blindness may not be an issue for you that night. You don't care. You really you really don't care. Everclear is 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 the is the liquor of choice for people who drive diesel automobiles and forget to fill up sometimes. Oh. It's not it's it's is it is Everclear is to your liver what um do you ever see those atomic bomb tests they did out in Arizona? Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of that. I know Dan uses Everclear to make his own limoncello. What is that? Lemoncello? It's a lemon liqueur. You drink like this much of it and you're fucked up for a week. 
That it's makes stuff. Sense. I don't know if you remember Danny DeVito. Oh, bye. I don't know if you remember Danny DeVito being really fucked up on The View a few years ago. No. Okay. <clears throat> I don't imagine you're a part of The View's demographic. Lemoncello is basically lemon flavored liqueur. It's liqueur. popular with Italians it, as like an after dinner thing. But uh, Dan makes his own by like hanging lemon lemons in cheesecloth over Everclear for like a month. And then. Then profit. <sighs> All right. He drinks is it. Well, it is the 21st century and we have this wonderful array of technology laid out before us and and quite a few people have seen very many movies and have very stupid impression of what that technology actually entails this people you always ask me why do you get so bothered when they get tech stuff wrong on tv and i try to explain because they're actively making people stupider and everyone's like, what? That's not a big deal. Well, it kind of is. Canadian city plans to track offenders with technology that doesn't even exist. What? On Thursday, the tiny Canadian city of Williams Lake in British Columbia may have just beat them all with a shitty idea of awe-inspiring proportions. The city unanimously passed a motion to implant GPS tracking devices into so-profiled, into so-called high-profile offenders after their release from jail. So law enforcement be aware of their activities at all time. Counselor Scott Nelson, who put the, the motion forward, told me over the phone that ankle-worn GPS devices don't go far enough and that chosen offenders could be harassers, sex offenders, or, quote, people smashing stuff in the community. So let's pause right there. This Canadian city wants to implant GPS tracking devices in people who might smash something. In vandals. Vandals. However, the article goes on to say, appalling implications for civil liberties aside... The idea is another huge flaw. Implantable GPS devices do not currently exist. Don't you feel like by the time this gets to government level, somebody should have Googled that shit? Yeah, we don't make, they don't make those, sir. That's not a thing. That's, That's not that, really a thing. Uh, maybe you've invented them. Here's the other problem with that plan that they won't tell you in the Congress or <sighs> Canadian Parliament. That's kind of a sign of the end times. Yeah. Ever seen Logan's like, run? When the Antichrist rises, everybody will be asked to bear his mark and stuff. Yeah. So, like, anytime they start talking about putting chips in everybody that'll have all your medical data and your ID and everything, and you won't have to carry a wallet anymore. And I'm like, great. And then the great beast will rise from the pit and swallow us all. Sure, that sounds fun. Then they'll un freeze Wesley Snipes and he'll figure out cut off your hand and then he'll go track down Sylvester Stallone. That too. I want to show you something. This is my phone. Okay. This is a Nexus 5. It's one of the smaller devices these days, although they, they can get much smaller, capable of handling a GPS chip. Yeah. And also most of this back is a very large flat battery. And here's that a charging explodes if you stab it. Yeah, and here's a charging port. You can't put this in people. It don't work. You would have to GPS takes a lot of battery power. You would have to have a way to recharge the battery, which presumably would be implanted as well. And the other little sticking point, GPS signals cannot penetrate human skin. There's also the slight problem that inside of humans tends to be kind of wet and squishy. Yeah, yeah, there is that. And have you ever dropped your phone in something wet and squishy? No, thankfully, I have not. I dropped my phone in a rest stop toilet on the way to Missouri, and thank God <coughs> I grabbed it in time and dried it off, and there were and I have like a rubberized cover, so Besides the fact of my microphone acting weird for a day or two, there were no ill effects. But 
it, they don't work too good when they're submerged in something wet and squishy. It's it's one of the, it just this is what happens when people see movies and they think that's a thing. That's a great idea. Well, sure. It doesn't exist. You're making people stupider, Hollywood. You know what I think we should do to what? quell crime? I don't understand why we don't why we haven't yet just just deployed the the Iron Legion. I mean, it's time. Yeah, of course that works because you know that was a thing. That totally would work. You know, just call up Tony. Look at that yeah. shit down. You know. That Although I'm not unconvinced that Bill Gates has something like that. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just not telling anybody. Oh, well. Bill Gates probably has a fucking Iron Man suit. The problem is it runs on Windows 10. This is the fourth time. This is the fourth time this has happened, according to our, our, our running score sheet. Here we four. Th this makes number four. Here the fuck we go again. Are you back in the chat? Yes. Oh, you're under a different name now. Oh, yeah. I guess I didn't get kicked out yet. Uh, I can't send it to you. There you are. There you are. Okay. Fourth fucking time. Several adults fight in a crowd of children. Tuesday at Peoria Chuck E. Cheese. Why is it always at fucking Chuck E. Cheese, man? It's always in the Chuck E. Cheese. It's always at the goddamn Chuck E. Cheese. What do they put in that pizza? Fourth time. A melee broke out Tuesday evening between several patrons of Chuck E. Cheese and Westlake Shopping Center with too many people fighting for police to keep track and make arrests. Officers responded to the children's entertainment area around 6.30 p.m. on a call for a fight between two men outside. They were gone by the time police arrived. An employee, however, asked officers to escort out the group of adults and children who were with the men involved in the fight. While police monitored their departure, two women began to fight. As officers broke up that fight and escorted one party outside, several more fights erupted from a crowd of dozens of adults and children, and police radioed for backup officers. Police ordered everyone out of the business because there were too many people arguing and fighting to control inside. As the, and to top it off, the cherry on top, as the crowd dispersed outside, two women reported mi a missing wallet and missing debit card, which were not immediately recovered. So not only, not only did we have this just clusterfuck WrestleMania in the Chuck E. Cheese, but someone was stealing people's wallets. What the fuck happens at the Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> I don't know. It's shitty pizza and kids games. Like, I, what happens? And it's never the fucking kids. It's never, the kids don't want to fight. They no, want to play the kids ski just want to play skee ball for three hours to win an eraser. And you know they don't play it. They climb the fucking ramp and drop the balls in when nobody's looking. Yeah, the kids just want to swim around in a ball pit full of balls caked in other kids' urine. That's all they want. They don't and want... eat shitty cardboard pizza. But the grown-ups have like a Miller light and a half and your ex's new baby mama shows up for her college roommate's niece's birthday party and all of a sudden it's the fucking Jerry Springer show. They had to clear the Chuck E. Cheese. There was such a big fight. They had to clear the Chuck E. Cheese. I'm just sitting there. I imagine the cop of the bullhorn. Everyone, please leave the Chuck E. Cheese. They please. had a straight fucking Beastie Boys video. They did. Break out at the Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, fuck me. This is the fourth time this has fucking happened. I... It keeps fucking happening. Imagine you're this kid, like you're a fucking eight year old kid. This is the center of your whole year. Yep. It's your birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese. This and like Christmas are what you plan your life around. You're having your birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese. You're eating your shitty pizza. And then your fucking parents 
start a brawl and y'all get sudden, kicked out. All of a sudden, Aunt Helen is nutshotting the, the ticket collection guy and everything's going to hell. Happy birthday, Junior. <sighs> Let your kids have their fucking... Can't you control your goddamn self? For fuck's sake. Right? Let your kids have their fucking birthday party, you... Well, this year for your birthday, Timmy, you're going to get an important lesson on the criminal justice system. The fuck, yeah. I, well, I know, they, some of them were. I'm going to ride in a police car. There were too many people to arrest. They just had to say, fuck it? I guess. You know, it's funny, when they had like 200 fucking bikers in Texas, somehow they managed. I mean, they also shot a bunch of them. <laughs> Well, we have another one from our You're Going to Hell file. Th this is definitely... That's not in the Going to Hell file. No, this is... This this wins the absolutely going to fucking hell file. Holy shit. It, it doesn't get much lower than this. But it's close. Parents who blamed terminally ill son for cancer ward laptop thefts are jailed. Kim Iger, 34, and Matthew Ingram, 37, pocketed projection equipment and laptops and then sold them on Facebook for a fraction of their value. But when police caught up with the uh, jobless duo, duo, they tried to pin the blame on their sick son, Callum, now 10. The court... Oh my God! The court heard that the equipment, including projectors worth about $1,600 US and laptops worth between $400 and $1,000, disappeared from Ward 31 of Leeds Greenery Infirmary in West Yorkshire between July 1st and July 10th. They were discovered missing by Joe Shepard, the director of the charity Candle Lighters, which had provided equipment to help sick children keep in touch with their families. Ingram claimed she had, he had removed the laptops from their fixtures because Callum wanted to see him test his strength. Uh-huh. Ager then sold the laptops for $100 to $120. $1,000 laptops she's selling for $100 a pop via her Facebook page saying they were ex-office equipment. Uh, a member of the staff contacted police after seeing the laptops on Ager's Facebook page. When police arrived to arrest Ingram at his home, he told them, I did it, I stole the lot, but he later changed his story, saying his son was responsible, which his wife Ager also claimed. I've heard of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. I was not familiar with asshole syndrome by proxy asshole by proxy yeah yeah like fuck let's, let's count compounding the error here fuck you stole a bunch of shit from a hospital shit that was donated so that terminally ill children could get in touch with their families and then you sold it for drug money and then when you got caught you blamed your own terminally ill child what, yeah, Callum, look, you're going to die anyway. What are they going to do to you? Right? Right. right. Well, they're just going to put you in the pen. You'll be dead in a month. It ain't like they're going to put you in jail. You're just going to die. Yeah, get mother. And not even like they were using the money to pay for his treatment. They were using the money to buy crack. Oh. Uh, fuck you, jail. Fuck you, jail. This poor kid, man. Yeah, I know that poor 10-year-old is like, my parents are assholes. Like, when you're 10, you got to think, you've got cancer. That's about as bad as it can get, right? No, oh, wait, no. there's more. But wait, there's more. Uh, no, no, Callum. Never say never. We are not yet done fucking you. The worst thing that could ever happen to me has happened. Oh, you think? The and adventure is just the beginning. Part and a voice from the heaven says, Not so fast, young man. Not so fast. We have more for you. Motherfucker. What is what? Your own son is these people are helping your own child. And you 
My God. And on Facebook, no less. Yeah. Not even fucking Craigslist. Not even Craigslist. Relatively anonymous. No, no. Like you put it on your Facebook page where your name is. Yep. Gee, do you think someone from that hospital who's taking care of your terminally ill son might no. check in and look and see how the family's doing? And They're never going to figure that shit out, man. It's the perfect crime. Uh, uh, the fuck. You're going to hell. You're going to just no. There's no, no, no hand basket. Not, none of the, none of the fine shit. You're not going, you know, first class. So you don't even get the hand basket. You're just straight to hell. Is there first class passage to hell? There must. There must. Is be. there like a luxury? Is there like a luxury section on the hell highway to hell? Maybe, maybe it's for like you know, I don't know. I, I can't really think of what that what the luxury did, for... would warrant a luxury trip to hell. Maybe people who yeah. wear white after Labor Day or something. I don't know. Well, yeah. <laughs> they don't mention it in Dante's Inferno, but there's a circle of hell for that. <laughs> there it is. Dante left it out. There's a circle that of hell. That totally for fucking exists. For people who wear white after Labor Day. White after Labor Day, brightly colored underwear under white pants, black and navy together. Hell. Our last one tonight, wow, I'm impressed. I'm astonished and impressed. Oh, boy. Uh, we've had, it's uh, yet again, someone has put something in their hoo-ha. Uh, Why? But this is actually kind of, I'll, I'll show you, Tara. No, wow. there's no justifying it unless it's a dick, a fake dick, a tampon, or official medical equipment. Woman tried to smuggle half pound of cocaine in her vagina to JFK Airport. Look at that thing. That went in someone's... Bajingo. That's not, I mean, that doesn't concern me as much considering, I mean, if that really freaks you out, you haven't watched enough porn. That's a half a pound though. They make dildos the size of an adult human arm. Yeah, but they don't make the dildos out of cocaine. The worry is what if that leaks, you will die. Oh, it's fine, Tara, cause it's tape. That'll keep it in securely. I mean, to be and... fair, it is packaging tape, which I'm convinced you could hold people like in zero gravity conditions just fine. But I didn't really have an analogy there. Packaging tape drives me crazy. But it... <laughs> if that breaks and leaks, you're going to die. 24 and it's old. also probably going to burn like a motherfucker. 24 old Well, women. actually not. Cocaine's a painkiller, so... You're going to lose all feeling. You're... All... I don't know what that's like. Having your entire vagina go extremely numb and then dying. Yeah. 24-year-old woman was busted at John F. Kennedy Airport earlier this week for allegedly using her genitalia to smuggle in $10,000 worth of cocaine. Officers of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection searched uh, Shakira Thompson, Springfield Gardens resident, shortly after she arrived at JFK from Kingston, Jamaica. They escorted her to a private search room where, in questioning Thompson, they learned she had vaginally inserted a foreign object. The officers were provided with the vaginal insert, an oval-shaped ball in masking tape was found to contain half a pound of cocaine. Can we break down that oval-shaped Ball. Yeah, that's not how balls work. What's the definition of a ball, children? Spherical. Spherical. Unless it's a football. I guess. It's a cocaine. Or rugby ball, I guess. I could, how could, could that you? That phrase just annoys me, though. 
could you really be walking around comfortably with half a pound of anything jammed in a crevice? Well, like, I mean, the vagina is an amazing organ. I, I know it can like, do if, it. Like, if you really think about it, calling someone a pussy to imply they're weak is stupid. Babies come out of those. And babies are bigger than that. I, yeah, I know, but... I'm that not doesn't saying mean it, you should do this. I'm not saying it can't. I'm saying that can't be comfy. I can't imagine it is terribly <laughs> comfortable. Because that's not even in the womb area. That's sitting in the vaginal canal. And the just a is, half like, a pound. Just The other worry is... <coughs> excuse me. I don't see a string. No, I don't. I, oh, no, no, I don't either. Because we've done a lot of stories where people put things in that didn't come back out. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to shove something up your vagina. You want an exit strategy. <laughs> <coughs> don't put anything up there without a plan of how you're going to get it out. Ugh. I just I mean <coughs> sorry I have a tickle but like what if you can't get that out and it just winds up chilling out in your uterus until it fucking dissolves uh, who th how was this a good plan that, that's what I want to know is this a common I'm sure it's common because, I mean, people swallow little condoms full of them. Yeah, but half a pound at once in one thing. Okay, maybe she was really good at Kegels. It's time for <laughs> sex ed, guys. Everybody sit down. It's time for learning about your vagina with Tara. <laughs> Kegels don't work out the vagina, you guys. They don't. Kegels work out the opening to the vagina. There's, you can't strengthen the actual vagina. You can't do it. There, there's no, that's like saying, I'm going to work out my spleen. It's inside you. You can't, act, no. Kegels work out the opening to the vagina to tighten it. So all the Kegels would do would help her keep this thing inside of her and not have it fall out while she's walking, which probably wouldn't happen anyway. They're not going to help her get rid of it. No, like you can't you can't do any exercises that will help you squeeze an internal organ in order to eject something like that's not a thing. This has been your vagina with Tara. My work has been commended as strongly vaginal. I it, oh, my God. Half a pound of cocaine. That, yeah, that is pretty but like and you not only did she walk around like that, she sat on a plane from Jamaica to New York. All right. T to give you guys at home an like, idea. That was probably worse. Like walking probably wasn't so bad. Sitting in a coach seat with half a pound of anything rammed up your hoo-ha. I want you guys to imagine going into a grocery store and taking a half pound bag of sugar and just jamming it up your bajingo. That's how big this is. I, I I wonder if like if if this happens often and people in New York are going, Hey Dave, does your cocaine smell like lube? I swear, I swear. I swear. Do they make cocaine flavored lube? <laughs> Because I learned something interesting this week, and I won't tell you how, but I did learn that they make, and I quote, jizz-flavored lube. Which I guess, at first I was like, why would you want that? And then I was like, you know, I'm actually surprised I hadn't heard of that before, come to think of it. No pun intended. Like, once I gave it a minute's thought, I was like, you know what? Yeah, that actually makes perfect sense. But do they make cocaine-flavored lube? Maybe they should. So anyway, what have we learned this week? We learned about jizz flavored lube. And we learned about kegels. We learned don't. 
don't tape up half a pound of cocaine and, sh and shove it in your. In, in, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't put anything inside your vagina without an exit strategy. Exit strategy is key. Anything inside your vagina without a plan for how it's coming back out. Oof. Ditto for your ass. We've learned if you things up your ass, if that's fun for you, cool. Have a plan for how it's coming back out. We've learned that if you're 10 years old and you have cancer, yes, it can, in fact, get worse. It can always get worse. Always Is that the opposite of the It Gets Better campaign? Yeah, it can always get fucking worse. Are we going to start the It Can Always Get Worse campaign? It can get worse. Brace Listen yourself. Children, I it know things seem pretty bad right now. And I know you think it can't possibly get worse than this, but it fucking can. Yep. yep. We've learned that Chuck E. Cheese is... Is the new fucking cage match. Chuck E. Cheese is the nexus for the rage virus that will destroy us all. The rage zombies from 28 Days Later, they're going to start at the fucking Chuck E. Cheese. Let your kids have In their In that urine ball pit. That's probably the problem. Let your kids have their fucking birthday party. That's yeah. We've learned don't try to make laws for technology that does not fucking exist yet. Or at least laws to implement technology that does not exist. Be I'm like, interested to see how they put that into effect. <laughs> we want this to happen now. Well, um... It can't. Well, you're going to jail since it's the law. But... You're okay. violating a court order! Then we get into some Kafka-esque shit going on there. Um... Read a book. Read a fucking book, children. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We've learned that Everclear, it's not a fun time. Apparently not. You'll end up naked on the train tracks trying to start your car with a pair of scissors. It's it's not it's not all it, it's it's not just the name of a band. It's also remember a bad when time. the worst thing that could happen to you is you could be living in a van down by the, the river. river. <laughs> it can always get worse. It can always get worse, kids. And finally tonight, we've learned if you were on the freeway in California and you saw a unicorn run by, you weren't having a flashback. Yes, that was an actual fucking unicorn. Well, that, that wasn't the Everclear. That wasn't the Everclear. You saw, you saw a fucking unicorn. Or the cocaine you shoved up your vagina that morning. It's just coming full circle, isn't it? I like to keep it all connected. Half a pack. I bought half a pound of sugar today at the grocery store. And now my brain's just going, that was no fun. That couldn't have been any fun. I mean, I do repeat, I was a 10 and a half pound baby. My mom squeezed something nine times that size out of her to but, make me. But that's, the, that's in the womb, though. This is just right in that vaginal canal. <laughs> Yeah, but you have to pass through that vaginal canal to exist in the yeah, physical plane. Your mom didn't carry you in the vaginal canal that whole time. No. That would have been... I'm just making the point that it does comfort. stretch to an incredible degree. It but you shouldn't take advantage of that power. You shouldn't abuse that power. I mean, for Christ's sakes, I have to unbutton my pants if I eat a bunch. I can't even imagine just... 